co-work. I'm co-working here at Nows House in the city today. Taking a break to have some lunch. Got myself a healthy bowl. I'm getting myself a healthy dose of sunshine out here in the square, which lots of other people are doing at the same time. This is my first day actually sitting in an office space working in about nine months. Um, I mean, I've been in training rooms, um, run some workshops and things like that, but not just sat in an office in a dedicated environment to work. Uh, it's doing wonders for my productivity today. So I'm standing at the end of Post Office Square in Brisbane. There's a whole stack of construction work going on there, an enhancement project, and that's some um, central station behind me. Uh, the buses and trains are pretty good in this city and this is Post Office Square which is a nice area for people to come out and have lunch and hang out. This is the old general post office at the end of the square. I don't think it's used as a post office anymore. I think it's all uh, like shops and cafes. Nope, I was wrong. There is a post office here um, but it certainly doesn't take up the whole building. Just about to finish up my first day of working in the NAUS um, office space. Um, I didn't really co-work, I barely spoke to anyone, but then I had my head down and I was working uh, pretty constantly on um, my blog piece that I've now been coming backwards and forwards to for about, gosh, it must be almost two weeks, I mean two months, that long. So my third draft of the piece, which I have been calling the value of experience in the information age, uh, 868 words, but not landing. Um, and the bulk of it, sort of from here on, was about really a story, um, probably to about here. So what's that about? Well, more than half of it was a story from my time at Coca-Cola Amatil about a particular dilemma that the engineering manager had with trying to capture the knowledge of a long tenured um, engineer. So a lot of the feedback Katie had for me was that I was relying too much on the story and not coming from a position of authority and really explaining what the problem is and that I'd targeted something a bit too specific and that there was a broader problem or issue which I can help organisations to solve or have a view on a different uh, future vision for that and I needed to be bringing that out um, and she coached me to go back to the basic template for dangerous blogging and that formula is here about what's the problem, who it affects and how it affects them, a bit about myself and why the problem matters to me, um, how I'm positioned to help solve the problem, the solution I envisage and how the world will look once the solution is applied and why that's better. So I've gone back to the formula and I've not told a story. In fact, I need to work a few examples in. Um, but the other thing Katie did was she gave me a constraint. And often constraints drive creativity or a different way of solving a problem. In this case, the problem is actually getting this bloody blog written, of course. Um, and the constraint she gave me was no sentences longer than 10 words. That's not many words, right? So to loosen myself up again, I started handwriting. Um, and I also went and did some reading and made notes. There's some stuff from Dion Hinchcliffe and some examples and case studies he gave that made a lot of sense to me. Um, and I was able to really hone in on what my intent is with this piece. And it's really to shift the mindset of leaders and their perspective about opening up access of their people to the network in effect and to sharing knowledge not only inside their organisation but outside of the organisation and to becoming a more connected or social business, developing an abundance mindset around knowledge. Then I moved to the computer. I've gotten rid of the title because I don't know if the title is um, relevant anymore and I wrote in this much more conversational tone with shorter sentences and I'm quite happy with it. So the tone and style is much punchier, it's much easier to read, much less kind of intellectual, which is always a risk with my writing, it gets a bit theoretical and intellectual potentially. Um, so it's not finished, but I think it's heading in the right direction and I've asked Katie for some feedback on tone and style and that's all that I have time to do on it today. I've got to get back home, uh, if nothing else, to spend some time with that poor puppy dog who's been on her own now for almost seven hours. 
So Bella and I have come to our first puppy class, which of course is more for me to learn how to handle her than it is for her to learn anything. But I think she's just passed the first test. I've got this cage for her, I'll show you, and it's her first ride in it. So she is in here. She's just tucked up, aren't you, Bill? Oh, here she comes. Hello, darling. She handled that really well. She's just very calm. But I'm going to get her out and take her into the vet. Little bark or that little wind for attention. And if you leave it, they calm down and they're fine. You know, it's just that. 